Hello dear students, how are you? So today we are going to start a very important topic which is the lead accumulator, lead storage battery or lead acid battery. First of all, keep in mind that it is a battery. Battery is basically a collection of the cells. When two or more than two cells, they are connected in the series, then we get the battery. So battery is basically the galvanic cells which are connected in the series. Now why we use the word storage or accumulator? Accumulator is basically a second name of the secondary cells. So word accumulator shows the nature of this battery or the nature of the cells which constitute this battery that they are the secondary or rechargeable cells. So secondary or rechargeable cells are called as the accumulator. Storage because it can store the electric energy. Acid because the electrolyte in this battery that is sulfuric acid. Lead this lead refers to the electrodes which are made up of the metallic lead in case of anode and lead dioxide in case of the cathode. So basically lead refers to the electrodes, accumulator refers to secondary cell, storage refers to its ability to store the electric current or electric energy and acid refers that the electrolyte in this case that will be acidic and it is a battery, it is a collection of the galvanic cells which are connected in series. So this was the discussion of the reason for the different names. Now the electrolyte is 30% sulfuric acid having density 1.25 gram per centimeter cube and molarity almost equal to 3.2. The anode is spongy lead, porous lead plate basically which is negatively charged and you know that in case of the galvanic cells the anode is the negatively charged plate. The cathode is made up of lead dioxide which may also be called as the lead 4 oxide because the oxidation state of lead in this case that is plus 4 and it is positively charged plate as in the galvanic cell the cathode is positively charged. Now let us discuss what happens during the discharging of the lead accumulator or the lead storage battery. During the discharging, the atoms of the metallic lead, they lose electrons and the lead, they are changed, lead atoms are changed to the lead plus two ions. Now the lead plus two ions, they take sulfate ions from the electrolyte and the lead sulfate is formed. This lead sulfate gets deposited on the anode. As the lead atoms are losing electrons, so this is an oxidation reaction which is taking place at the anode and because of the electrons which are lost by the lead atoms, the overall plate gets the negative charge. And these electrons now start traveling from anode to cathode and when they travel from anode to cathode, this is the electric energy which is produced by the lead acid cells. Now when they move to the cathode, then cathode takes these electrons and by using the hydrogen ions and the sulfate ions of the electrolyte or the sulfuric acid, the lead dioxide is reduced and again the lead sulfate is produced and this lead sulfate again gets deposited on the cathode. Because the electrons are being gained, so it is the reduction reaction which takes place at the cathode and due to the usage of the electrons, the cathode is relatively positive as compared to the anode. And during this discharging, the density of the electrolyte changes from 1.25 gram per centimeter cube to 1.15 gram per centimeter cube as some of the electrolyte or sulfuric acid that is being used. Now dear students, the one lead acid cell can produce two volts and if a battery is made consisting of three lead acid cells connected in series that will produce six volts and if a battery is constructed consi consisting of the six lead acid cells connected in series then that will produce the 12 volts. So in the cars either a lead storage battery consisting of three lead acid cells is used or the lead storage battery consisting of six lead acid cells is used. It depends whether the six volt is required or the 12 volts are required. Now it is a secondary cell, I have already mentioned that in the name that accumulator is the second name of the secondary cells or the secondary cells are called as the accumulators. So it is rechargeable. 
and during recharging the direct current source is used dc source is used and when the dc source is used nothing happens but all the reactions are reversed so all these reactions the anodic reaction cathodic reaction and the overall redox reaction all these reactions are reversed and my dear student during the discharging the lead sulfate gets deposited both on anode and cathode and during recharging when all the reactions all these reactions they are reversed then the lead sulfate which was deposited on the anode and cathode it gets removed from both anode and cathode and again the anode becomes of the spongy lead and cathode is of the lead 4 oxide but a very important point that if the lead storage battery or the lead acid cells they are discharged for too long or the discharging takes place for too long then the lead sulfate which gets deposited on anode and cathode becomes very difficult to remove and the battery will take more time for the recharging that's why it is highly recommended that the lead acid battery should not be discharged for too long otherwise the re recharging will require more time and the battery or the cell they will not be completely recharged as the lead sulfate will not be completely removed from the electrodes and when the recharging takes place again the density of sulfuric acid from 1.5 gram 1.15 gram per centimeter cube is changed to 1.25 gram per centimeter cube now my dear students where this battery is used it is basically a car battery so in the cars to turn the engine on to turn the lights on to turn the music system on the electric energy is required and that electric energy is provided by the lead storage battery and you can see them into the cars it is very commonly used in the cars nowadays uh, dry battery is also used but still in so many cars the lead accumulator is used very important point that no salt bridge is required in the lead accumulator or the lead storage battery why because in the case of the lead acid cells there is a single electrolyte that is the sulfuric acid and salt bridge my dear students is used in that case where the cell consists of two el electrolytes just in the case of the daniel cell which consists of zinc sulfate as well as the copper sulfate so in order to connect the two electrolytes we use the salt bridge but in case of the lead acid cell there is a single electrolyte so there is no need of the salt bridge at all it was all about the lead accumulator take care